So welcome again, this is the Grassroots Webinar, and tonight we're going to focus uh, our time on another refresher on handball. So we talked about this last a couple of months ago. Um, I'm going to briefly go through some considerations and then just start watching some clips and see how, we, uh, how we're responding to them. Uh, so I wanna use this as a bit of a spot check to see if uh, the guidance we've been focusing on over the last couple of months with handball is settling in or if we need to spend a little bit more time conceptually understanding it degree. So we'll do a quick review of some considerations. We'll look at some clips and we'll leave some time at the end hopefully for any questions. So here we go. So we're gonna go quickly. I'm not gonna do a laws of the game review. Hopefully everybody has read the laws. What we're gonna to cover tonight uh, is a, a summary that's provided by FIFA actually uh, that helps to sort of narrow and break down a little bit uh, what we should be looking for for handball. So we're gonna cover with, this, uh, with these considerations a lot of what the language is in the law. So we don't need to go back and look at that. So first of all, these are the kinds of things to be looking for if you're going to find someone guilty of an offense for handball. It needs to be a deliberate action. Um, I'm gonna narrow that down in just a second because really what I'm talking about is defenders. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a second for why. But for deliberate action, we need it to be something that the player demonstrably did on purpose. Now, we have to be careful with intent because we don't really know what the intent of a player is. And unless we're getting inside their brain somehow, we're not gonna know the answer to that. So we wanna to try to remove the idea of trying to figure out why they did something and just try to figure out what they actually did, use, use what their body did to try to determine if it was deliberate or not. And there's some clues we can look at uh, in a couple of minutes to, to help us with that. We wanna see if there's additional movement. So oftentimes, the most difficult handball decisions we look at are ones where you know, the, the ball didn't travel a very long distance to get toward a player, and maybe their hand was already sitting somewhere, and then it hit the hand, and uh, what do we do with that? Do we call it handball or not? So one of the guidance that we're, we're offering referees now is to look for any additional movement. Once the ball has, has left the foot or the head or whatever it last was played by, if the player who's, whose hand or arm it ends up touching didn't move at all before the ball hit them, then maybe they're not going to be guilty of an offense versus was the arm in one position and did it move slightly to get into a different position before it hit the hand. If you see that additional movement, or as we call a second action, now maybe we're leaning more towards a handball offense because that would assume that they did it deliberately. So if we see some extra action in there, if we see movement from the arm, that might be an indicator that what they did was deliberate. Do they make their body unnaturally bigger? Uh, and an easy way for us to think about this is have they created a barrier? So when we talk about making the body bigger, the, the factor we wanna be thinking about the most is that sort of chest cavity, the, the width of the body or the silhouette as we like to call it. If your arms or your hands are within your silhouette of your body, then we don't want to punish you for that because we were born with arms, we can't do anything about it, we don't want players to have to defend like we've seen the last few years where they're putting their hands behind their back to take their arms out of the picture. We don't wanna do that, we don't wanna force players into that. And so the most recent guidance for us has really focused on um, the, the natural silhouette of the body and are their arms close into their body or are they unnaturally bigger? Meaning are the hands and arms spread out away from the body? And then if so, have they created a barrier with those arms? If the ball had, would have gone past them were it not for that arm extended away from the body, now we have a barrier that's been created. But if their arms are tucked into the body, and the ball hits their hand, well, maybe the ball would have hit their hand, their body, or what, the ball would have hit their, their body anyway, even without the arm, and so they haven't made themselves unnaturally bigger. And we'll see some, uh, some examples of this when we, get, uh, when we get to the clips. Is their hand or, hand or their arm above their shoulder? Um, IFAB has determined there's never really a good reason, for the most part, for their hand and their arm to be above the shoulder. So if you ever have somebody who's got their arm or their hand above the shoulder, we would consider that an unusual and usually unnecessary position for a soccer player to have their arm in. And then if the ball touches their arm, even if it's not deliberate, we're gonna have a handball there. 
So I want to make clear as we go through these offense, these, these considerations, they don't all have to be present. We're just looking for one of them or a couple of them. But if you determine there's a deliberate action by itself without any of the additional movement, without the unnaturally bigger, without the ham arm above, arm above the shoulder, a deliberate action alone is enough for a handball. The hand or the arm being above the shoulder, enough for a handball. Even if they didn't do it deliberately, that's just an unusual position to have the arm in. And so we want to, we want to deem those handballs. If an attacker scores directly into the opponent's goal with their hand. Now, notice it doesn't say deliberately. It just says, if the attacker scores directly into the opponent's goal. We don't want to see handballs being scored from, or excuse me, we don't want to see goals being scored from handball, even if it's accidental. And so if somebody is just standing there and the ball hits them in the arm and it goes in the goal, we need to call that goal back. We don't want goals being scored from the hand or the arm, even if it's not done deliberately, even if their hands were tucked into their body, it doesn't matter. If that ball ever touches the arm of an attacker, we're going to want to call a handball here. If an attacker gains possession or controls and then scores, the, the, the scores a goal or creates a goal scoring opportunity, we want to blow the whistle for handball. The e there's a lot in that and we could debate this for a long time. The easiest way and what is being applied at the professional level is if the ball touches the hand of an attacker somewhere in the attacking third, not in the midfield, but somewhere in and around the penalty area, just blow the whistle automatically for handball. We don't want attackers creating or benefiting from, uh, we don't want them creating or, or, or realizing opportunities to score goals from a handball, even if it's not deliberate. So as uh, some of the best instructors have outlined for me, we actually have two classes of handball. We have handballs against defenders and handballs against attackers. If an attacking player has the ball touch their hand or their arm, no matter what, if it's in the attacking third, blow the whistle. Doesn't matter if they did it on purpose. Doesn't, none of these considerations we've talked about here matter. If the ball touches their arm, it's a handball in the attacking third. Now for defenders, we have to worry about all these different things. So we do have two different classes of, of, of handball. We don't want to be punishing defenders for incidental contact or contact where their arm wasn't unnaturally bigger, all those things. Attackers, doesn't matter. If it touches their arm, it's going to be a handball. Any questions on the considerations for when we do want to call handball? We have a question here, is the shoulder considered part of the arm? The answer to that is no. Is the proper phrase handling or handball? Uh, I believe it's handball in the laws, but I, I think they might reference both of them at some point. So uh, we don't have to worry about that so much. Jerry, your question here, my opinion on player putting hand to protect the body. Uh, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. I've got a couple of clips that show that. Question here, is there a difference in the male and female game? The answer to that is no. Another question, is it no handball if the player extends his arm forward to fend off the ball to protect themselves? Youth do that sometimes. We'll talk about that when we look at some clips. I think that's a good question. I'm going to move us on. So these are situations where we usually don't want to call an offense. If it comes directly from somebody's own head or body, now this is unusual, we don't see it that often, but if somebody heads the ball and then you know it, it skips off their head weird and it hits their arm, we don't wanna call a handball. If someone kicks the ball and for some reason they miss hit it and it pops up and hits their own hand, we don't wanna call a handball. If it ricochets off a part of their body, if it hits their thigh and bounces up and hits their hand, we don't wanna call a handball. So it's not usually an offense, if the ball comes off of their body somewhere and then pops up and hits the hand, unless we have a deliberate action, unless we have additional movement, unless their hands are sticking way out to the sides, those are all different circumstances. If they do one of these things up here, we are still going to consider them guilty of an offense. But if their hands are in a natural playing position and the ball just bounces off their body for some reason and hits their hand, we're not usually going to call a handball there. 
if it comes from a player who is really close by, again, that's assuming none of these other things are, are present as well. But if a player is standing there, arms are in a natural position at their sides, and somebody really close to them just kicks the ball into their hand, we don't want to call a handball for that. And again, this is a big one here. If the hand or the arm is close to the body, if they are doing everything they can to keep their hands and arms in tight to their body, we don't want to punish for them for that if the ball ends up hitting their hand. We just don't want to do it. So we have to be really thoughtful about when that hand and arm is really close to the body, we do not want to have handball. And lastly, if their hand is on the ground to support their body, this normally happens when someone's committing a slide tackle. It's a natural human thing to try to brace yourself when you're falling. Your, your brain just does that automatically. You're not even thinking about it. We don't want to punish players who are bracing themselves for a fall, put their hand on the ground, and then have the ball hit their hand. Now, if they're sliding and their hand is stuck out way to the side, that doesn't mean they're supporting their body. They're just making themselves unnaturally bigger, and we can call that. But if a player just has their hand on the ground supporting themselves as they fall and the ball hits it, we don't want to call a foul there. So these are the considerations I'm going to ask you to think about. I want you to take a minute here and do a screenshot so that as we watch these clips, you can refer back to these considerations when trying to make your decision. So we had a question here, is, the, is there a criteria to determine how close the arm hand should be? The answer to that is no, because as soon as we put a criteria in place, we're going to be asking to measure, uh, you know, and you get a ruler out. I mean, it's all a little bit uh, ridiculous to try to do that. So we have to use our best judgment. If a player is trying to keep their body, their arms close to their body, we don't want to punish them for that. We had a question here, if a defender deliberately uses a hand to prevent a goal, I know it's a PK, but is it an automatic red card? Um, we'll talk about that a very little bit, Steve, but uh, that's not going to be something we get into here in a lot of detail. We're mostly focused on how we make handball decisions, not what the misconduct is after the handball decision is made. So with that, we're gonna look at some clips. You're gonna have a poll put up after each clip and these are the potential answers. I wanna talk about them now because I think people when the polls come up just automatically click yes and don't really think about it. There's three options for yes. And I want you to think about which is the best possible answer. There's either no handball, which means we wouldn't blow the whistle, or if you think yes, we should call a handball, I want you to think about why. Is it because that was a deliberate action? Is it because they've made themselves bigger or is it because their hand is above the shoulder? Now there will be circumstances I'm sure where one of two answers might be applicable. I want you to think about what's the best answer and that's what we'll focus our discussion on. So when the first poll comes up, don't be real quick to hit yes. Please look at which answer you wanna choose and be thinking about why you wanna call it a handball. They will come up in this order on every poll, so I won't be trying to confuse you, but I really want you to be thinking about why is it yes? If you're gonna call a handball, is it because it was the deliberate action? Is it because they were making themselves bigger? Or is it because the hand was above the shoulder? All right, so here we go. I'm going to close us out of this. Give me just a second here while my computer catches up. All right. And here we go. First clip. And I will play it for you a couple times. You'll get some replays. You're going to want to look at the top left screen right now. There you go. These are all VAR replays, which are really helpful for us. One more time with those replays.
So that's our moment of truth. Whoops, sorry guys. For those of you who've had jumpy screens, let's watch it one more time. Right there is our moment of truth. So I'm gonna launch our poll and let's see where we end up on the first one. Few more seconds. All right, we are off to an excellent start. 92% say no handball and you are correct. For the handful of people who thought this is a handball, the thing they'd be really paying attention to is the fact that his arm is tucked really tight into his body. He's doing everything he can to keep that arm really close to the body. And so we don't want to punish him for a handball when he's doing everything he can to get his arms out of the equation. Uh, if you look at the left, bottom left screen right down here, this is another good indicator. Watch as he comes across, he tucks that arm in. He's got it tucked in as tight into his body as he can. There's nowhere else for his arm to go unless he puts it back behind him. So even though, yeah, it definitely touches the arm, and yeah, he definitely meant to put his body in front there, the fact that he's got that arm tucked in means we don't want to call a handball. Good start, everybody. Well done. Next clip. AR had a bug problem. All right, and I'm going to give you some replays here. So if we go back and look at that again, we're going to look at this one and then we'll get large in the screen again. Player jumps up, headed ball, and that's our moment of truth. So I'm going to launch the poll again. Let's see where we come up in this one. Whoops, sorry. I'm sorry, folks. I did the wrong one. No, I didn't. I apologize. I'm sorry. A little off tonight. I had a long day. Redo the poll. Few more seconds. All right. So, again, very good start for us. 78% say yes, this is for the player making themselves bigger. There's a handful of people say this is a deliberate action. It's not a bad answer because I think this is a smart player and I'm sure he put his arm up for a reason. But if we're going to talk about deliberate, he's got his back turned. He can't see anything. His eyes are probably closed. So, to say that he deliberately put his hand in front of the ball that he couldn't see is probably not as good an answer as this is a player who has made himself bigger. So making himself bigger, another factor, if it had been a possible answer, would have been the arm above the shoulder, either of which would have been perfectly good answers. So this is definitely a handball and a PK. Uh, for somebody that asked a question earlier uh, about potential misconduct, generally speaking, if you block a shot on goal with your arm, it's going to be a yellow card. But that's only if it's not denying an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. So in this case, 
when the handball happens, I don't think we can say it's obvious that this would have been a goal that was scored. It's a header. There's two or three defenders, including the goalkeeper, in the goal still. We, didn't, we can't tell where the header was going. It's quite possible it would have gone over. There's a lot of ifs about whether or not this was an actual good goal-scoring opportunity. But we can say that this was likely a header on goal. Therefore, this player has stopped a shot. And if you stop a shot with a handball, it needs to be a yellow card unless you determine it's an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, in which case it would be a red card. Now, if this same player is on the goal line and the ball's about to go in the goal and he jumps up and does that with his hand, now we're talking about a red card because the ball is about to go into the goal. If it weren't for the hand, we know that that's obvious. Now we shift into a red card. But here, it's not clear if it's going on goal. It's not clear it would have beaten the two or three defenders, including the goalkeeper. So because it's not obvious, we just go with a yellow card for blocking a shot with a hand. Any questions on this clip? So we had a question here. Why would, why would he choose to make himself bigger? I don't try to even understand why players do half the things they do. It's not our job to try to figure out why they did something. That gets into intent. And that was something I talked about a little while ago. We don't want to try to figure out their intent. We want to just judge their actions based on what they actually did. And this is a player who's got his arm up above his shoulder. He's made himself unusually big. Now, if you contrast this video with the last one we saw where the player had his arm tucked into his body, this is a player whose arm is clearly not tucked into his body. So he's making himself bigger. Who knows why? Probably to try to block a shot, my guess would be. Why he would do that, I don't know. But we can't, we can't focus our time on why they did something. We just have to focus on what they actually did. Yes, Debbie, thank you for pointing out. I, I uh, had the wrong answer on my poll. I apologize. I had indicated on the PowerPoint that above the shoulder would be an option, and I neglected to do that, and I put attacker instead. So my apologies for that. We had a question here. What if the player is facing the one heading the ball? Does it matter? Because the hand is still way apart from the body. It's still making himself bigger. So even if he's turned the other direction, it doesn't make a difference he's still got his arm up in an unnatural position to try to block the ball. He has created a barrier. That was one of the, the references we used earlier. All right, moving us on to the next one. All right, we'll watch it one more time. All right, there's our moment of truth. And I will launch the poll. A few more seconds. All right, we're continuing on a good trend here. 83% say yes for making himself bigger. And we had 9% say yes, this is a deliberate action. Um, I, would, I would argue that making himself bigger is uh, the better answer here. Yeah, he has deliberately put his arm up, I'm sure. 
but he's made himself bigger. We don't see a second action towards the ball. We don't see the player move his arm towards the ball once it's been played. And that would be the only reason we wouldn't think about this as a deliberate action. Again, with deliberate action from close in like this is, we would expect to see this arm make a motion after the ball has been played. It doesn't hear he's got it up well before the ball is played, which would lead us towards thinking that this is just a player who's made himself unnaturally bigger. So we said a moment ago about a player bracing himself for a fall or for a slide. If the ball had hit this left arm instead of the right arm, we would say no handball here because the arm is out to brace his fall. So that would be a good example of a situation where if the ball hits the arm as it's on the ground bracing yourself, we wouldn't want to call a handball. Any questions on that clip? We're doing well so far. We had a question here, if his right arm is closer to his hip and then it hits the right arm, I'm not going to speculate on that one, Randy, um, because how far his arm was from the body would be a big factor. Is it two centimeters? Is it eight centimeters? I don't really know. And so I'm not going to speculate on, you know, if his arm is down by his hip, whether or not it would be, because until we actually had a screen that we could look at where we could really make a decision, we would just be guessing on what you meant by closer. So I'm not going to get into that one. We had a, a comment here. It didn't look like the ball changes direction after going past the arm, so it didn't look like it touched the raised arm. Um, it definitely did, and I think you can see it if you watch it in real time. The ball was going across, and instead it went back here. And then if you watch it on the next one, you can see it. It's also a reasonable assumption that if I'm putting a handball clip up, it probably hit the hand somehow. I wouldn't put a clip up for a handball that doesn't actually touch somebody's hand. That would sort of defeat the purpose. So with a little bit of deductive reasoning, we can probably assume it hit his hand. One final thing to talk about for anybody who uh, may have noticed, the referee could not have been better positioned on this clip to make this decision. Perfect position, sees it clearly. If this slide happens a little farther to the outside towards this penalty area line, He's right on that line to be able to see if it's inside or outside. This is perfect positioning for foul challenges that happen down here on the left side of the penalty area. So if you've ever had a referee coach tell you you need to get wide, it's in these kind of scenarios where you want to create a very specific angle of view to be able to see something. Because if he had been over here at the corner of the D, where a lot of us tend to run to in situations like this, he would have been screened by this player and would not have had an angle of view to see that. So if he'd have been over here, he's completely screened. He has no idea. It hits the arm. He misses the penalty kick. So really excellent positioning here. I'll play it one more time so you can see how he got there. Really, really excellent positioning from the referee to be in the right spot to see this. Can't ask to be in a better spot than that. All right. Moving us on to our next one. All right, we'll watch that one more time. All right, and I'm going to find the run the one replay I want to use here for our moment of truth. All right, that's the moment we need to look at. Here comes the poll. If 
few more seconds here. All right. We're doing really well tonight. I'm really happy to see this. 85% say this is no handball, and you would be correct. For the handful of people, roughly 15%, who said, yes, this is some sort of handball, the thing to really focus on is the position of the arm before the ball gets there. It's right down by his side. It's not extended out away from the body. It hits his arm as he's running. I think he actually tries to pull that arm away to get it out of the way. But the position right of the arm right before it hits the hand is crucial. It's right down by his side. The other mitigating factor for this is, this is again, this is the defender whose, whose arm it hits. Everybody on the field would have expected this player to kick the ball. So as this ball goes, everybody on the field at this moment would expect this player is going to take a shot. No problem at all. Professional player, you would expect that guy's going to put his foot on the ball. The fact that he doesn't is very surprising. Catches this player off guard. You can see his arm right down by his side. It's a very unexpected. You can see he's trying to move his hand out of the way once the ball goes past the attacker. So this is something called an unexpected ball. Oftentimes when we talk about um, unexpected balls, it's when the ball has been played from a short distance directly into the arm. So if you're standing a yard or two away from somebody and they kick it into you, that's an unexpected ball because you don't know where it's going to go. There's no way to anticipate it. And if your arm happens to be in the wrong spot, the ball hits it. There's nothing you can do about that. This is another form of an unexpected ball. And it's because everybody in the stadium probably would expect this player to hit this shot. It's a perfect sitter right where it needs to be. He just swings and misses, completely misses it. And that catches this guy off guard. He's trying to move his hand out of the way at the last second. He can't. It hits him right next to his body. So it's next to the body. It's tucked in. It's not something we would consider making the body unnaturally bigger. So right off the bat, we would say probably no handball. But if you're looking for another reason why not, it's because this ball is very unexpected. We would expect this guy to put a shot on goal here. He misses, and the ball bounces and hits the guy in the arm. We don't want to punish what is clearly not a deliberate action here. Any questions on that one? We had a question here. Do the new IFAB changes for 2021 give this even more of a no? Uh, I'm not going to comment on 2021 changes for IFAB because they have not gone into place yet or not gone into effect yet. So I'm not going to comment on that. What if the unexpected ball hits the hand that is above the head or the shoulder? Now we have the arm above the shoulder, which is going to make us more often not guilty of an offense. So we're not going to have handball here. Any other questions on this one? Yes, Tibor, I'm aware of what the IFAB changes are. I'm just not going to comment on them because we're not going to teach them until they're actually being implemented. So I, I get what you're saying. I'm not going to comment on it. So we had an interesting question here. What is the correct restart here if the play is stopped for the review or for referee discussion? Um, ideally, you wouldn't stop the play just to have a discussion. Um, so... If the, if the referee calls a handball here and he blows the whistle and points to the spot and VAR decides that's just incorrect, or if the AR somehow is able to provide information that wants to, causes the referee to overturn his decision, then the restart would be the same as you have for an inadvertent whistle. Because you would basically be saying, oops, I blew my whistle on accident because it wasn't actually a foul. Therefore, that's an inadvertent whistle. And we're going to, uh, to, to restart with a dropped ball, which is what the restart is for an inverted whistle. Per the laws of the game now, if it's inside the penalty area, it's a drop ball for the goalkeeper. So we would drop the ball for the goalkeeper in this situation. If it's outside the penalty area, it would be whoever the ball last touched. Any other questions on this one before we move on to the next one? 
All right, we're doing really well. I'm very encouraged to see the accuracy of our decision making. I'll make sure the clips are more difficult next time. I'm going to fast forward. This one actually takes forever to find the right thing. So I'm going to fast forward to here and I would ask you to watch the right top corner here. if it takes quite a while to set up this wall. And I would ask you to pay attention to this guy right here, Fellaini, watch him. That's our moment of truth. Right there. Let's see what everybody has. Few more seconds. All right. So we're a little bit off on this one. We have some discussion to take place here. We have 62% say this is no handball. We have 32% say yes, this is a deliberate action. And we have another 6% say this is a player making himself bigger. So I want to start with the making themselves bigger part of this. Um, when we talked about a player making themselves bigger, what we talked about is extending the arms outside of the silhouette of the body. And so this is a situation where his arms are out in front of him in his chest, but they don't go wider than the silhouette of his body. And so he really hasn't made himself any bigger because his arms are tucked within his silhouette. So for that reason, we would not have a handball for Fellaini for making himself bigger. The question comes down to whether or not this is a deliberate action and we should punish it with a handball. Now, we're going to see this a lot the younger we see our kids, where they're putting their hands in front of their face, in front of their chest, in front of their growing, in front of any number of things they want to protect so that the ball doesn't hit them and hurt. This is a good example of a player doing that and we don't want to punish this with a handball. So the correct answer here is no, this is not a handball, because even though it has hit his arms, his arms were tucked into his chest in a defensive posture, and had the ball not hit his hands, they would have gone right into his chest, which means the practical outcome is basically the same, except he's protected himself a little bit. So it's important to note if a player puts their arms across their chest or in front of their face, we don't want to punish that for a handball because that's a defensive posture. It's a defensive motion. We don't want to punish that specific action. Now, where it can get difficult is players at times when they're protecting their face will reach their arms way out in front of their body. We have to be careful not to allow that because that's a more proactive movement to knock the ball down and less a defensive posture. So I would ask you to think about if a player puts their arms way out in front of their face, are they doing it with a defensive posture? Meaning is their head turned away? Are they deflecting? Are they putting their hands up in a defensive posture? As this player is, you can see his head's down. He doesn't want to get hit. He's got his arms out to protect his head and his face. If the arms are up in a defensive posture, a reflexive posture, and the rest of their body language looks like they're trying to avoid getting hit, meaning the head's turned away, maybe they're turning at a side, we don't want to punish that. 
But if a player runs up and sticks their arms way out in front of their face to knock the ball down, we do want to consider that a handball. That's a, a proactive gesture. It's an uh, initiating gesture, not a defensive and a reflective gesture. I hope that makes sense. So we had a question here. It looks like his arms are moving forward towards the ball. They're not because you can see his arms are tucked upward. This L shape right here would suggest his arms are in. The other thing here, we had somebody say, could this be interpreted as additional movement, therefore deliberate? The answer to that is no. Again, if someone has their arms tucked within their body, we don't want to call a handball. And this has a player whose arms are tucked into the body, and we don't want to punish that. And again, so we had a comment here. It looks like the elbows are out away from the body. They're not. They're tucked in. But we want to look at the silhouette. We, want, we would worry about this if the arm was out to the side. But this is a player who's got his arms within his silhouette. If the ball doesn't hit his arm, it's going to hit him square in the chest. And if we have that kind of scenario where the ball's going to hit the player, be it the arm or the chest cavity somewhere, don't punish him for that. The arms are within the width of the body, the silhouette of the body. There's nowhere else he can put his arms aside from down by his sides, and then it's just going to smash him in the chest. So why make a player take a potentially uh, injury opportunity by taking a ball to the chest like that when he can put his arms up to protect his, his body cavity? We had a question here, Matt, you're suggesting that a player jumping straight up, maintaining the silhouette, is not making himself bigger and not a deliberate action. Jumping up to block a shot is perfectly legal. You can jump up and make yourself bigger. As long as it doesn't touch your arms, it's all fine. So what I'm suggesting is that it's, a, yes, it's a deliberate action to jump. Yes, he's, he's made himself not bigger. His body's not bigger in any way. His body is the same size as it would be if he was standing on the ground. So he's not made himself any bigger. So really the only potential argument here would be a deliberate action. And while, yes, the act of jumping is deliberate, there's nothing in the laws of the game that prevent a player from jumping. It's okay to jump. So as long as his arms stay within his body cavity, then it's okay. It's okay to have your arms in front of your body cavity, as long as your arms are tucked in. Again, if this player is reaching out with extended arms to knock the ball down, that's a very different scenario. But in this case, he's got his arms tucked to his chest. We don't want to punish that. Any other questions? We had a question here. What would happen if the two players to the side we're using the center player to gain leverage and had their arms out in front of the center player. I, I've literally never seen that in the history of football. So I don't know why somebody would do that or how somebody would do that. So let's try to keep our questions uh, to what we actually see in the game of soccer, not just random questions that are speculative at best. Any other questions on this clip and what actually happened in it? All right. We're going to have time for one more clip, and I'm going to leave a little time at the end for some general Q&A and comments. Last clip. So a couple more replays now. Okay. 
That's our moment of truth. And here comes the poll. Few more seconds here. All right. So everybody's pretty much on the same page that yes, this is a handball. The biggest question comes now to is this a deliberate action or is this a player making himself bigger? Uh, the the Distance between those two answers is very, very small. Uh, one would argue we'd be splitting hairs to talk about if this is a deliberate action or making himself bigger. So it's not that important. If I were forced to make a decision, I would say that this is a player who is making himself bigger because he jumps with his arm out to the side as the shot's being taken and has very, very little time to react to this. But there is some secondary motion there. He stretches his arm out to create a barrier. So either answer there, perfectly acceptable. The big thing that I want to point out is compare this player jumping to block a shot with the last player jumping to block a shot. This player has his arm way out to the side. The other player had his arm tucked in. So it's not the act of jumping that is the problem. It's what you do with your arms in relation to the ball and your body that is the problem. If this player jumps and keeps his arms to his chest and it happens to hit him in the chest area, we're not going to call a handball. But here he has stuck his arm out to the side, created a barrier, and therefore we would have a handball. So uh, we had a question earlier about potential misconduct. This would be the kind of situation where we would expect a red card for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity as the referee has done here. Because as you can see from this, that shot was obviously going into the back of the goal. Goalkeeper, no chance to get there. This shot from within 18 yards, clearly going into the back of the net, were it not for that player sticking his arm out and knocking it down. So if the goalkeeper standing on his line, not out of position, if this is from a little bit farther back, we would say this is probably a yellow card because the goalkeeper's in position to make a save. Maybe he can save it, maybe we don't know but there's, there's a maybe in there. With this one, with the goalkeeper out of position, the ball's clearly going in the back of the net. He jumps up and knocks it down. We would have a red card for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. All right, so any other questions on that clip? I've left the five minutes at the end for, for a specific question that I would like to ask everybody, but any questions about this one? All right, then the last question I want to pose to everybody is um, we've been doing these now weekly webinars for about uh, eight weeks now. I think we're about two months in. And at this point, I would like uh, some feedback from people who are on the call for what other topics you might be interested in exploring. Um, my time is getting a, a little bit more in demand. We're, we're picking up a little bit more at work lately than, uh, than we were a couple months ago. But I do have time to create some, some slide decks and some video analysis based on topics you all are interested in doing. So I would ask you to take the next couple of minutes. It's 7.55. Uh, we have until 8 o'clock. Take the next five minutes, uh, now four minutes, and type into the chat feature any ideas for things you would like to see us cover. It can be broad topics, it can be more narrow topics, and I'm happy to take the time and create, uh, uh, create those, those uh, presentations for us. So take a couple of minutes, I'm gonna put myself on mute. Uh, I thank you for joining, I'm gonna pause recording now. And